Good morning, guitar players. Welcome to my weekly Facebook Live event. Here we are every Thursday morning, 9.45 a.m. CDT. So glad you've decided to join me for a little nugget of guitar goodness. Last week we had a little weirdo thing happen where the audio didn't work. I'm just going to go ahead and blame that on Facebook. Maybe unfairly. Couldn't possibly have been anything that I did. But anyway, here we are, we've got sound and we're all together. Today we're going to focus on another really common performing mistake, and that is letting a string ring that doesn't belong in the chord. So we'll talk about that in a second, but I want to encourage you to check out in the description, there's some, a lot of useful information, you know, my website, my YouTube channel, all that, particularly a link to my next Zoom class which is going to be on a Wednesday night, September 23rd. The name of the class is The Art of Finger Picking. So you know you want to come to that class, whether you're a new picker or you've done some picking and you've fooled around, now you want more, whatever. We would love to have you, so the link is in the description along with a bunch of other stuff. Meanwhile, let's talk about this note that sometimes, often, unfortunately, creeps in and kind of messes up the beautiful sound we're trying to make. And that is the sixth string. So the sixth string is the lowest string. We call it the bottom string, even though I know it's the one closest to the ceiling, but we're crazy, that's why we're guitar players. So we call this the bottom string. And it's a wonderful string. I love it. I may be even slightly obsessed with it when my bass note is on that string. So, for example, with a G chord, my bass note's on that string, so that's my favorite note in the whole world when it's got the bass note on it, and also E minor or an F chord. So that's when I really want to hear that note, but when the ba bass note is not on the sixth string, I definitely do not want to hear the sixth string because the bass, that means the bass note is somewhere else and that sixth string is going to be competing with the real bass notes. So we got to get him out of the mix. So what we do is we bring the thumb over the top of the guitar and we mute that string. I actually realized that today we're supposed to be talking about a different performing mistake. So I'm going to shift gears and talk about this other thing. There's so many ways to kind of mess up your performance. <laughs> So today we're actually going to shift gears and talk about playing too fast. And you might think, well, I get nervous when I'm performing and the adrenaline makes me play too fast. I'm like, yeah, well, that just means you're a human being because adrenaline is something that happens in the human brain to um, prepare us for a peak performance, whether that means playing your latest original song, or running away from a tiger, or defending yourself to an enemy, adrenaline prepares us for that. It actually kind of steps up certain, um, certain survival mechanisms. The problem is that it also makes us a little cray cray in other ways. It makes us think that everything has to happen faster. So it's really tempting to play a song faster than you mean to. And, and what you tragically realize too late, of course, is that, oh my gosh, I can't even fit in all the words and I can't even breathe enough. And when then it's over and you're like, what just happened? So even though, or maybe especially because we know that this adrenaline is going to be working when we perform, we have to just kind of embrace that and prepare for it. So how do we do that? We train ourselves to use our brain to refuse to take the bait, so to speak. All right? So I have a few very practical, specific things that you can try and do to counteract this tendency. The first thing is, why don't you take a deep breath? It is just amazing how that will give our brain time to reconnect with the non-crazy part of our brain. 
and it's like the frontal lobe, the executive function that can actually choose how fast we do the song instead of just reacting. So what we do is we try and take a deep breath. If you've got time for a couple deep breaths, that's even better, okay? And then the next thing we do is use our intro to remember how we want the song to be, okay? So if the tempo for the song is like this, we need a second to remember that. So train yourself during the intro to check your tempo. And the intro is your opportunity to adjust the tempo if you started out too fast. Because you haven't started singing yet. You haven't even really committed to anything. So if you need to bring it back a little bit the way you want it, that's your chance. Now my husband Bob, Bobby King, who's a great musician, I've learned a lot from him. I hope he's learned just one or two things from me as well. <laughs> he gave me a great tip a long time ago as far as trying to focus on the accurate best tempo for your song. And that is, at the beginning of the song, don't sing the verse in your head or the first line of the song to see the kind of test if you're in the right groove. He suggests actually thinking about the chorus because the chorus is arguably the heart of the song and arguably the most important part of the song. So in your head, you know, be thinking about how do you want that chorus to feel? No, you're not going to start singing with the chorus probably, but that's your best benchmark to determine your tempo, okay? So... good get in the zone for your intro the good thing about an intro especially one that is very simple and we'll talk about this in the future the good thing about that really simple intro is you can do it as long as you need to all right you can just hang there until it feels the way you want it to feel all right the other reason it's really important to choose the right tempo is that when we have adrenaline going, our body uses oxygen less efficiently. So even though you've practiced your song 300 times and you know that you can get through a line or two or whatever it is on, in one breath, however you've been practicing that, when it comes time to perform and you've got adrenaline affecting your brain, you will find that you need more oxygen. So you're going to need to breathe more deeply and more frequently. So you don't want to be playing it too fast while you're trying to manage that as well. So that's just one more reason that we do not want to be playing faster than we should, okay, than we have planned to. So anyway, those are some, some good tips. Breathing is your best friend. Oxygen is a good thing. And using your intro to really deliberately consider the tempo and how it feels to you. There's your chance to put that tempo where you want it. All right, y'all. Meanwhile, check out the description. Check me out on my website and my YouTube channel and my Google reviews, whatever else is, is there. And think about joining us for the Zoom class on Wednesday, September 23rd. We do one per month. And actually the October Zoom class, which is October 28th, is going to be on classic soul tunes. You so do not want to miss that. And I am really hoping that Bobby will join us for that class on the bass because he kind of knows everything there is to know about that. And he's made some great suggestions of Really um, surprisingly simple songs with a great groove that belong in that classic soul category, and they're just, it's, it'll do you good. So think about that. Meanwhile, we hope to see you on September 23rd for the Art of Finger Picking. Meanwhile, stay in the groove.